Go ahead and get started if they don't stand. Mr. Dips, do some prayer. Father in heaven, we come now thanking you for life, help Man, we come blessing your name because it's the only name we've been taught. The name to be blessed. Father, we come because we love you. We come because we know you know all about this before this day came. Father, then we ask as we go through this business of the citizens of this county, of this community, in this state, we do those things which is right. We bless your name for your goodness and your mercy again now. We pray for peace all over this land and country. Sick and shut it. Father, help us now as we make good decisions for our people. We thank you and we bless you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, welcome everyone to our meeting this Monday, November the 6th, 2023, 6 p.m. We have a conference line set up. The number there is 1917. 9001022, access code 32347-POUND. This is not a toll-free number. And you may be subject to long-distance charges according to your long-distance plan. When the chairperson opens the meeting for public comment, please follow the below instructions. If you wish to speak, please dial star five. The moderator will unmute your line when it's your turn to speak and notify you by announcing the last four minutes of the telephone number. Please announce your name and address and you'll be allowed to speak for minutes. Any person wishing to address the board regarding an agenda item will be given three minutes for comment. A commenter may only speak one time for each agenda item. <coughs> With that being said, I'll move to number three. Uh, we have an approval of the agenda. I move. Motion second to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think our administrator had an announcement she needed to make. If you want to go ahead and do that now? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Fiegel wanted me to announce to the board and to the public that she will not be at tonight's meeting. Her husband was readmitted to the hospital today, um, so she obviously will not be here tonight. All right, we'll move on to uh, number four, board recognition. The board to consider approval of draft resolution dedicating Taylor County Fire Station 4 in memory of Mr. Charles Mincy, presented by our county administrator. Um, this is a resolution, so I want to make a motion to. I move that we make read the resolution by child on. Second. 
We want to read the entirety of the. Let's read the entirety of this. Okay, we we'll read the entirety. It's entirety. You have made okay. your motion to read the entire. Uh, All right, we have a motion and a second to read the resolution. Uh, the, the whole thing. thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. All in uh, favor? Uh, 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 the resolution dedicates Hare County Fire Rescue Station 4, Ecofina District, in memory of Charles Mincy for his over 50 years of dedicated service as a volunteer firefighter in Taylor County. <clears throat> Whereas the Board of County Commissioners have been advised that Charles Mincy has passed away, and whereas Mr. Mincy provided volunteer fire service to Taylor County for over 50 years. Whereas the lives and property of the citizens of Taylor County were made safer by his valuable service, years of service. Whereas the Board wishes to publicly recognize Mr. Mincy for his many years of dedicated service to our county, and now there, Four, be it resolved that the Taylor County Board of County Commissioners, on behalf of the citizens of Taylor County, extends its appreciation and admiration to the family of Charles <coughs> Lindsay and recognizes countless hours of dedicated service, loyalty, and devotion to his duties over the past 50 years. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution <coughs> be furnished to the Mincy family and that a copy be placed in the minutes of this board. Done and ordered in regular session at Perry Taylor County, Florida, the sixth day of November, 2023. I believe some members of his family are here. If you want them to step forward, I've explained to Chuck that once the resolution is signed and embossed, that I'll get a copy to him, or I'll get the original to him. Okay. You need to vote on the passage of it. I'm sorry? Vote on the passage of it. I move. Okay. I have a motion and a second to... Uh, Resolution, all in favor? Aye. 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 Lot to him. He, he spent countless days and nights away from home helping uh, not only with the actual fire but behind the scenes and fundraisers and uh, trying to help uh, the, all the volunteer districts afford to be able to do what they did back when they didn't have the funding uh, that they do today. I will share with you that uh, when he stepped out of his role before he passed, he told me how proud he was of the county and <clears throat> how they funded the volunteer services and how well things were moving forward. Just want to share that with you. Uh, on behalf of the Mincy family, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thompson also join me tonight. 
What we're going to share with you is a proposal for your consideration. It's a bit complex, so what I will do after we share it, I will immediately give you a hard copy of it as well so you'll have it to, to look at and ask for the questions, okay? Sure. So as, as you know, the Citizens Action Task Force primary focus is to seek a potential buyer for the pulp plant. In fact, the meetings to reach out to dissolving pulp industry players is happening as we speak. And will happen tomorrow as well in London. And we'll, they'll be back later this week. But as a matter of pre planning, in the event a buyer is not found and full closure of the plant um, is to begin in six months, as GP has called the community, um, we, the Citizens Action Task Force, recommend that TCTA contract with an independent subject matter environmental expert to closely review permitting plans and applications and potentially make recommendations regarding the GP plans. Now, our task force recommends the firm Due Diligence Associates of Tallahassee um, to do the review because of the background and knowledge of one of its principals, Chet Thompson. Chet has 35 years of experience working at the mill site on these type of matters for the current owners, but also for Buckeye Technologies and Procter & Gamble before that. The county manager, TCDA task force members, 20 River Water Management District staff, and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection permitting staff have discussed various approaches to get this work done. And the Swanee River Water Management District Executive Director, Hugh Thomas, stated that the district may be able to provide funding for these services, but would need a letter from the Taylor County Commissioners requesting that they fund this work. Uh, and this approach, and this is a key, this approach is to help ensure the best positioning for economic reinvestment or repurposing of the site, uh, that that would be considered in the plans and permitting associated with any pulp plant closure. So this is really focused on if the plant does shut down, there is not a pulp mill buyer found, then we would be asking uh, this this person or this company to review proposed permitting plans such that it will enable us to um, still have good um, a good setup for potential repurposing of the site. So Chet Thompson is going to share some information about the proposed uh, scope of work and the rationale behind recommending the TCDA contract for this work. Thank you all for allowing me to speak. The commissioners, I, I'd like to share a few points because we had heard questions and all some things that uh, what we don't think it is. So some things that it's not. I know um, this is not an indication that we think that GP will not fully follow regulations because we think they will. In our experience working for them and with them and their predecessors, um, the companies, including GP, had clear expectations of meeting all regulations that would be fully complied with, and I'm confident they're going to do it in the future. They're, this is not a concern that, oh, they're not going to follow regulations. This is also not a, a uh, indication that we think there's some hidden environmental issue out there at the plant. Um, regulations require self-disclosure when, when a site finds something, and uh, in my time out there, uh, it was always self-reported, and I'm confident the environmental staff out there have continued to do that. So uh, I do not, I believe everything that is knowledge, it is the agencies, multiple agencies already have that knowledge. There's no surprises out there that the agencies do not know about. Um, so I, I don't think that's an issue in my experience with DEP, the Water Management District, and EPA. Is they're all highly professional and very focused on protecting uh, the environment. A few points on what it is, uh, why we think this may be a good option, is the, the plant's permitting framework is complex. Uh, and they're issued by multiple per agencies. Uh, just to give you a quick example, the wastewater permit is issued, which also includes the solid waste uh, 
management and the groundwater monitoring is issued by the Northeast District DEP out of Jacksonville. The water pumping is issued by the Swanee River Water Management District. The air permits are issued by the Air Division out of Tallahassee. The, um, the pipeline obligations around seagrass are issued by the Corps of Engineers out of Panama City with review responsibility by the National Marine Fisheries Service out of, out of St. Petersburg. So it, it's, it's, it's just, and that's just a start. There's lots of people's fingers in that business out there across the board. So it's, it's complex. There, there's also that there is, this is also a indication that permitting is with public interest. You can ask the permitting agencies, uh, you know, there's a public interest test in all permitting. In years past, when I was the environmental manager, I often spoke to the commission and, and what was I mainly looking to was to meet, ensure that we met the permit, in, the, the um, public interest test for permitting. It is of the public's interest if a permit is issued. And so we, we think that is still the case. And so, you know, it is, there's, there's always that question. And by the way, the DP will have to permit the dismantling of the plant. They had to permit to build it. They're going to have to permit to dismantle it. And there should be some questions about the public interest when that comes up, right? This should be in the public interest. And by the way, you can ask any agency people, you represent the public interest of Taylor County. The elected officials, not the individual, they'll listen to the individual out there in the public, but they want to hear from the elected officials of the county. You represent that, that public interest. So you're the official representative. You have significant weight. I, I don't know in my years past that I realized how weighty the county commission is when it came to our permitting actions out there. So just be aware of that. This is also to say that I believe there's a plan action. And that's the, the one that Michelle just mentioned. And by the way, that's the one I'm praying for. I'm praying that plan A works, they find a buyer, and, and you don't see me again for a while. <laughs> Not in this context. But, uh, but I also know there's a plan C going on out there. And that plan C is GP's plan on closure. And by the way, they talked to me about working for them on that plan, right? But I told them that I will not give them a proposal to help them on closure until I give an opportunity, can I help in providing something different? So it, it is my belief that well, there will many be a plan B. I hope there is. If, if plan A doesn't work, that will benefit from the significant environmental assets that are out there. There, there are, those permits are assets to a business, yeah. right? That infrastructure is an asset to the business. You heard uh, Senator uh, Scott write a letter on that here a while back. He knows that there are assets to the site out there that would continue <clears throat> to benefit the economic job base for the county. That's, that's the goal, right? And so, Frankly, within a day or two after the announcement, uh, Taylor Brown and Michelle called me before anybody from GP or DP uh, contacted me, and uh, they asked me to give them a proposal. So that's how this started because this idea that we would, you know, we would um, try to leverage the significant assets and permitting if a just straight out buyer is not found. So. While the proposal I provided back early, now probably five weeks ago, could be improved, it still stands. And uh, until, until the TCDA resolves whether they would get money and em employ me, I'm not going to respond to GP. I'm not going to respond to a request from DP for, for, um, for assistance until I think if there's not an opportunity to help TCDA first, it's where the proposal is. So 
it's it's out there. If TCA does decline, I probably will still be involved, but it's going to be working for GP or it's going to be working for FDP uh, rather than the TCDA. And I think there's a unique possibility here with the TCDA. I do, some of you know me, you know, I spent since 1995 working on Finn Holloway River, and forever it seemed like, and it was my goal that it, it, we resolve those issues, not because I was an environmentalist, I do believe in protecting the environment, but that wasn't it, it was for the benefit of the community that have a business that would go on for many years, and so it's still my goal that we would help have a business, some business that would help uh, provide for the people of Taylor County. So that's still my bottom line motivation. And I, that's enough said. I'll open for a quick questions, and I think Michelle will, will end it here. I'm sorry for taking so much time. So. If I could, I'd like to pass these out to you and then and check my entertain questions. So what I tried to do in this handout is I underscored the items, because there's a lot of information here, but the real items, the key points, and that is that this is about closely reviewing, permitting plans and applications, and potentially making recommendations. Okay. And it is to help ensure the best positioning for economic reinvestment should the site shut down. Uh, currently shut down COVID. So it's, it's not about trying to find fault or problem with somebody or something. It is about being sure if, if the site does shut down <coughs> um, that it's positioned for a new kind of business to come in and potentially use the site or potentially use some of the equipment if it's not just a cold one. And so what we're asking today is to have your support to send a letter to the executive director of the Swan River Water Management District to request funding for this work. Okay. So I'd like to open that to questions now. Tim, I hate to put you on the spot. I'm sorry. This is Tim Alexander with Swan River Water Management District. Um, so just to clarify, does the Swanee River Water Management District require a letter from the Board of County Commissioners in order to fund the TCDA directly, or the, does the TCDA need to make that request directly of Swanee River Water Management District? Um, answer your question, typically we always work with the county is, is how we usually do that. Uh, not to say that if we got a request from them that we may be able to fund that as well. Um, I do know that uh, uh, Director uh, Thomas has been in contact with Michelle and, and Taylor and we've had some conversation with DEP concerning this issue. A um, couple different ideas were floated early on so I, I just want to say I, I know she put in that letter that we may fund it and, and the, the thing is we have four core missions and that's water supply, water quality, natural resources and flood protection. So we would have to work any request we get within those parameters of what we just want. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that it can be submitted either way and we can look at it. So funding wouldn't necessarily have to flow through the Board of County Commissioners. That's really my question. If, if the board requested funding on behalf of TCDA, would the funding go, move, flow directly through TCDA? Or would it have to flow? I, I would say, and from my conversation with Director Thomas, it, it's it's always been considered that we would work with the county. I just, and, and I have a great working relationship with Mr. So, you know, um, yeah, that that would be our preferred approach. Right. Not not saying we wouldn't consider it. You know. And also, you know, keep in mind that if that contract goes above that that threshold amount, that, then you get into where it would have to be. Procured in a whole different aspect. I'm just saying. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, Any questions? Um, so, if we you know, move forward with the 
approval of the letter. That one sounds like it would need to come from us, but if the funds were awarded, we would, we would just, how would we do it? How would that work? It, it sounds like it would flow through the county, so it would be, it would go through our procurement process, and I, I don't know if the TCDA has considered a contract with with due diligence or not, but I, I'm not sure if that's come before the TCDA board. I, I don't know either, and, and it's just our our committee's recommendations, okay, for y'all's consideration. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, but I I personally don't know the answer to that. Okay. So. Um, I would, and I think yeah. tonight we're just asking for quote a letter because you know whether it comes through the county or TCDA or exactly how you procure the services or whoever you decide to procure. So that's in, you know yeah. you may think about how you want to do all that. You know we're not really asking you to decide all that tonight, but you might. You know. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Any other questions from the board? Uh, just one question in respect to um, contracting with due diligence and the wealth of information that's with that. Um, I, I guess in working with PCDA or the Board of County Commissioners, what measure of transparency would you expect in trying to communicate findings or reports or things like that with the public and with the board and, and obviously with the public? Full, full, full transparency, you know, that when I say full transparency, that, you know, that would be the, you know, one of the points is to be able to share fully with the board and, you know, through TCDA, assuming that's how, and that was the proposal we put together went to TCDA. We could obviously change it. You know, if necessary, but it went there, and the idea would be there would be full transparency. And you know, that's I, I, I want to be clear. My experience with when I worked for the company, there, you know, they didn't ever hide anything, but they they manage the release of information as companies do. You know, it's it is it is uh, it wouldn't be an automatic. Uh, you know, wouldn't be automatic sharing with the board if I end up working for the company. If I'm working for TCDA and the board, it would be an automatic recommendation and sharing. Yeah. But just understanding that investment of, of public dollars into the board of county commissioners or TCDA, obviously Sunshine. would would Sunshine. absolutely. Sunshine. Yeah, and that's I mean, that, that means that you advertise when your meetings are. You know. Um, that's one thing you need to think about because when you're dealing with public funds, you're under uh, governing the sunshine. Sure. That's sort of, yes, sir. Okay. I just want everybody to be sure no, of that. No, no, no. That's you know that's a it's a it's a um, it, it, it's a it's a valid a valid point I guess in in our mind we have thought that that, you know, given a closure process, it would be, and you all are representing that interest of what's where, what's going to happen in the county here, it would be, it would be good to make sure things are out in the sunshine. So, okay. Yes, sir. From what I understand, you asking, <clears throat> Jill asking tonight, let's just send a, count, a letter to Swanee River Management District. With the possible supporting what? What are we supporting? Okay, so I'm going to draw you to your first page. Go ahead. Okay, is that it? Because of all of the talk, it is sometimes confusing. And in that first paragraph, it's underlined. Yeah. Um, it is to recommend a contract with an independent subject matter environmental expert <laughs> to closely review permitting plans and applications. And potentially making recommendations regarding GP plans. Okay. Okay. That's, that's what, what that letter should be stating, though. and that's what we and should. Not, and not may or, or even due diligence at this point. Right. That's right. Yeah. Right. It's just about. That's a request of the letter in the A report. Yeah. That's what we were recommending. Yeah. The reason we recommended TCBA is because this really does relate to repurposing the site. And bringing in new business, so yeah. that's why we thought of TCDA. Okay, if, if, they don't, if, they if Bob don't comes back this Friday and says we got a buyer, then we can put this yeah. off to the side, right? Yeah. But I guess also, 
understand that. that. With this request for the, the TCDA um, process moving forward, do they have the same procurement process in respect to contracting them with due diligence, or can 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 they move forward without going through what the county would be requiring? I don't know that they have the same requirements now. That that I don't know. They may be able to operate differently than the board would. No. And just to your point, I think we need to understand if we send a letter to Swanee River Water Management District, then I mm -hmm. think, and if Swanee River Water Management District funds it, which they may not, because I don't believe economic development is one, is that correct, Tim? Is one of their core missions, but if they, <coughs> if they were to fund it, then not only would we have to follow our procurement policies, but then the contract would be with the board and with due diligence for environmental consulting work, which is not necessarily in our wheelhouse. And also, our, our liability policy has exclusions for environmental activities. And it's, it's broad, so I don't know that it would apply. I mean, that's a, that's a question. So... That's just having to manage it all the way through. Being involved. I would think so. Would, I mean, would that mean the best thing to do is to go with the recommendation of the group? I mean, the recommendation is a TCDA contract with due diligence. Well, but if TCDA is asking for funding assistance through Swanee River Water Man Management District, I don't know. I just want to be transparent that I don't know that that would be a possibility. I'm not. I'm not countering him because he is right there right you know and so maybe maybe but when you know uh, director mm -hmm. thomas talked to michelle and and taylor mm -hmm. you know he said i think we can fund some things but rightfully he says i want to know that the people of taylor county represented by these folks are behind it so we mm -hmm. it was almost not a request that seemed like he was re asking for. He was asking just a, a a declaration of support. Now, I don't know how that lines up with what Tim, Tim has said, but that was the original kind of request. Is we, we want to know that the people of Taylor County as represented by the commission is behind this idea. Sure. Yeah. I, I agree with that statement. But, but again, I think at the beginning, some of the things that were considered to be looked at may not have felt just in the wheelhouse economic development. That's why I wanted to make sure that we, you understand, we would only fund something that falls within our core mission. So, understand. 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 Uh, yes. Understand. So, uh, does it sound like the TCDA it may be better to TCDA set a letter of uh, support from them? Because I mean, it would almost bypass the procurement process that we've had to go through, right? I think if the TCDA wanted to consider this and, and request the funding directly from Swanee River Water Management District, that they may, that may be a simpler process with, you know, with the disclosure that it may not be funded if it's considered economic development activities. Does that make sense? The yeah, only thing I'd say on the economic development piece, I think it's all still about only protection of the environment, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. but such that however it's closed, it could still be potentially developed in the future. Yeah. But there still would be the chance for funding in respect to, to the actual mm -hmm. request. <coughs> and that what your company would be doing is reviewing the plans and applications for that potential future use. Yeah. But it is environmentally related and directly connected to the permit, which Absolutely. might connect us back to the water yeah. management right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, please, Dan. Okay, I'm Simmons. I'm also a member of the task force. And in listening to this, I wonder if there's some way we could marry all this up. We're talking about TCDA. Water Management District wants this public statement on behalf of the community. Is it possible? I'm just thinking out loud. The County Commission could write a letter saying we support this. Would you fund it through the TCDA? They would have the weight of the County Commission behind it in the public, but then it may, it may flow through this other organization. 
they would have the strength of uh, the public sentiment from this commission. Yeah. That, that's, that is what Mr. Thomas was asking, is he wanted to know, he, he, he was like, yeah, I'd like to do this, but I want to know that this group is behind is a line that we're not going counter to what the leadership of the county is doing. That that was his statement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me say that. I, I am for doing what we need to do. When you got twelve hundred people sucking <coughs> or more. Right. You know, then you take twelve hundred people out of this county, we got a ghost town. Now I do uh, I am particular about when we are signing, what we are signing, how we are signing. Okay, we have a council there. Council could you guys give us some guidance on that? They asked him for a letter of support. I'm willing to give some support. As far as I'm go, but if anything else come up, then I need to, we need to bring it back to the commission. There's a letter of support for the TCDA effort to hire due diligence sure. in this past. And if, and if Florida Management wants another letter from y'all, then you, you fall back and decide whether you want to write a letter. Okay. Kim, you follow me? Yes, sir. Y'all, y'all okay. follow me? Okay. So, do, so would the request need to come from TCDA after they consider this, this request? Would they need to consider the request and then come back to the board and ask for a letter of support? I, I'm wondering if we're putting the cart before the horse and TCDA hasn't considered this request as of yet. And I don't, I'm not sure that they have. I'm not sure where the TCDA is with this. I mean, have you guys spoken with the TCDA? Well, I certainly have spoken with Taylor Brown. I do not know. I, I don't believe they've actually taken this up as any of their meetings, but I don't know that for sure. We were not I don't believe so. I don't believe so, but I think they have a meeting coming up <laughs> shortly. Maybe. So, is it before the next board meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. It should. So, if they were to meet on this subject matter, mm -hmm. and then we could have some directives on their thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I think, I think we're all in support of what you're, the initiative trying to do. I think it's about doing it the right way. Perfect. Sure. I, I kind of what Dan, Mr. Mm -hmm. Simmons said, maybe even something from the county, but also asking the request to go through the TCDA, the funding to go through the TCDA. So, okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Constitutional officers, other governmental units, number the board to appoint two members of the Board of County Commissioners, one member and one alternate to the Camp Taylor County Canvassing Board for the 2024 election cycle, agenda by President Sutherland, our supervisor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 133 days before the next election. Oh, <laughs> 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 Um, I'm here tonight to ask for the appointment uh, of the member to the Kansas City Board, and as you all are aware, I need a member to serve, and then I need a member as an alternate. As you're considering that appointment, remember it does need to be a county commissioner who is not um, scheduled to appear on the 2024 ballot. So I know that does limit a few of you. <laughs> That takes, yeah, District 135. So that leaves two and four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Sounds like me. <laughs> you want to be the member or the alternate? I'd be the alternate, be fine. <laughs> and and Miss Fiegel would have to be the, the member. That's your appointment. Uh, either you either way, I, I'd be glad to do either way. Yeah. I think at this point we've worked with all of you, so yeah. <laughs> you're good. Well, that motion, uh, my, my. I second that motion if I'm able. Yeah. I'm 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 I'
member for the canvassing board and uh, Commissioner Moody to be our alternate. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nicholas Warren, American Civil Liberties Union Foundation staff attorney to discuss redistricting in Taylor County. Good evening, Commissioners. Good to see you all again. Um, I've been summoned <laughs> back here to <laughs> uh, right. talk about a little more to, to recap. Um, districts are out of whack. Uh, constitutional parameters say that 10% uh, difference between the smallest and largest uh, district is constitutionally permissible, above 10%, presumptively invalid. Uh, Taylor County has found itself because of population shifts over the decade at almost 50%. Um, at 48, uh, so that's almost five times over the legal limit, so to speak. Um, and it's not unusual, it's obviously uh, through no fault of the board or, or anyone else, uh, but from time to time, uh, you know, look at the map, see what can be changed, can be updated, and, and brought back in line with the Constitution. Um, so here to answer any more questions you'll have, uh, take any direction, or provide any advice you'll need. And also should introduce some of my colleagues who are here with me uh, from Tallahassee and Jacksonville, Abdila Skier, Madeline Bowman, and Joe Dive are uh, all on our voting rights team as well. Is this the new map? Uh, it, it, that's up to you. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the concept map that um, that I drafted just to show that it's possible. That would even up the numbers, is it what you're saying? Sense. Yes, sir. So that's within how close was? Uh, within definitely within ten percent, um, and I would expect so. That's actually on. I don't know if y'all have printed out. Um, uh, okay, it's a, it's a, it's attached to the the letter from the spring, um, and it looks like the largest district is at um, plus three point eight, and the smallest is minus three point five. So that's. Uh, under eight percent. Within your range? What's that, sir? That's within your range? Yes, sir. Within ten percent. What page do you own that? That is the second to last page or the last page of the letter. Uh from but oh, that's that may not be in the presentation from last workshop. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that it is. Uh, this is what we have displayed is the conceptual map. If we bring up the presentation it no, it, the, okay. the numbers may not be in the presentation, but um but I can read them out to you or, or send them uh, over. But that was in the letter, the original letter that, uh, that we sent last time. Is there any room for adjustment on those particular boundaries? I mean, I, I was asked by several residents about that potential. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how we would arrive at that place. Yeah, there, uh, there are a million ways to draw a map, uh, which <laughs> may make it sound harder, hard, like a harder exercise than it is. Uh, but yes, absolutely. There's wiggle room in there. This is just one, again, a concept to show that it's possible to change it within the constitutional parameters. Um, but uh, if, if the board wanted to proceed with this as a starting place and tweak and, and discuss changes between different districts, that is definitely doable. I see. Okay. The way it sounds like to me is that the way it's going now is illegal. So to get it, we have to adjust it to make it legal. Was, is that what you Yes, sir. The, the, the board's existing map that has been used. For... <clears throat> who, who come up with this illegal part of it? Well, that kind of happens naturally over uh, time as the population changes, right? When it was drawn 35 years ago, um, it was that was based on the 1980 census. Um, people move, you know, people move out, people move in, uh, etc. And um, and the districts just become unequal in population, and all of a sudden. And one, you know, one person, one vote principles no longer in place. In respect to this conceptual, is there a, a, a copy of the existing? Yes. So the the, the light, those the colors are the concept map, and the light black line or kind of darker black lines over it is the existing map, which is on the the side there. Awesome. So the they should look hopefully look familiar to you. Uh, I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so um, 
So where the color where the color districts align with the black lines, that would be the line hasn't changed. Um, and then where you see uh, areas of color like uh, north of Perry, there's the uh, a portion of District Two that is in this map moved into District Four um, in between 221 and 1927, um, and that would be an area of difference. So there are some, um, I mean, there's some areas that definitely change in this map more than others, especially around District 5 and, and Perry, um, and then some that just needed some tweaks. Um, district 3, which is, I think, the largest, district, the most overpopulated district is in um, the one that uh, folks are kind of the most underrepresented is in they, uh, their vote counts, uh, have punches the least. Uh, compared to others, has to shrink um, as an example, which is why it loses those stretches um, down uh, on the west side of Keaton Beach Road and uh, north of uh, Foley Road. So the basic, if I'm reading that re correctly, the Beach Road and Highway 27 is that boundary of border. Yeah, yeah, for District 3? Yes, sir. Uh, so it goes down 27 and then um, and then cuts across to uh, 1998 on Foley Road and Mixon Road. And then... Oh, I see. And so it's actually south of Highway 27 yes, for sir. some piece. Yes, sir. Um, I had to get my binoculars out. <laughs> and uh, we, may be able to, we may be able to zoom in on any portion. No, uh, but this would be definitely... Easy. We can work this on is, that. I think we're working on getting a, some high-quality print. Uh, what up, Max? Maybe. If, if I could interject, I spoke with Commissioner Fiegel earlier today, and she's asking if we could try to print some maps that show much more detail, some large maps, so y'all can actually go to the street level and perhaps review those in a workshop. Yeah. Um, so in an upcoming workshop, if we can find a way to print large large copy maps that, that show a greater amount of detail. I'll, I'll have to get staff involved to see if there's a way to overlay this utilizing our GIS. That's really the only way I know to, to do that. For printed, yeah, and that would definitely be helpful to see. Um, this link, this is just Google Maps with these overlaid. This is a public link. Um, hopefully it should be in the materials from last uh, workshop. Yeah, um, but I can share again, and you can zoom in and zoom out and scroll over uh, any part of the county that you want. Toggle on and off the existing map lines to seem clear. Um, but yeah, this is again concept map is the title because it's just a con it's just a proof of concept. So, yeah, I asked Miss uh, Look for one to bring that back up and to put it on the agenda because I thought you said you only had so much time to do this before the next election. And uh, the one that I that was in that packet, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get my streets and all to get it. I need a bigger map and much plainer, so I can show it to my constituents, and we everybody can see what it is. That gray area there is what scares everybody. You know, you can't see it. You can't really imagine what's going on. <clears throat> Do we want to look at it at the uh, workshop at the end of the month? What is the time period that we're looking at? Because I know we don't have a workshop typically in December, and I just want to make sure that we have enough time to to actually get some maps presented before the next workshop. <coughs> what, are, what is our deadline? Yeah, so the, the legislature uh, made it really easy. There is a, a drop-dead date that, uh, after which you cannot pass a new map, which is February 9th. So um, that's... Coming up soon. That being said, um, there, if you don't pass, if, you, if the if the board doesn't pass a map, uh, like I said, technically this map right now is in violation of the federal constitution. Yeah. Um, so, state statute, U.S. Constitution. <laughs> I'll leave that one for Mr. Bishop, maybe. But um, but to advise on what you know you'd be empowered to do. There's also the the Bellamy Consent Decree, which allows um, actually. We worked with um, another uh, county that technically passed its map after the deadline um, about a year and a half ago. And um, they submitted the, the new map, which I think would have to happen in Taylor as well. If you pass a new map, it'll have to be uh, added as an amendment to the Bellamy Consent Decree, because that's a court order that's ordering the county to use this map. 
Um, and I think the federal court wouldn't have any problem saying we're amending this consent decree and you're allowed to use your new map regardless of what the legislature says the deadline is. Um, that's what happened in, I can't off the top of my head remember which county it was, but yes. yeah. Jackson. Jackson. Yes, Jackson. Um, a year and a half ago, that's what, that's what they did. And no one complained. And <laughs> So you're saying if this is adopted by the February date, then that would be the lines for the upcoming 24 election. Correct. And, but also in compliance with the requirements. Uh, what I'd like you to tell them, my client, the, the board, the process. I, you know, they understand the, uh, you know, the, the line drawing and trying to figure out what what it is, but what process? does the board have to do and be in compliance with notice and those type of things? If you can just give them an overview of that. Um, so that's a good question. Um, that is not quite my area of expertise, but I know there's at least a one meeting notice requirement, I think, or there's a publication requirement, but yeah. Um, yeah. Um, in another, truth be told, in other, in other um, counties, it hasn't seemed like an incredibly formal and lengthy. Well, do you have somebody at your office that could uh, write out a, um, a not, not a program, but a listing of what we need to do to effectuate and get this done prior to February the 9th and just send it to Luanda and me? Sure. You know, sure. Somebody, <laughs> their expertise. Sure. Because that's just as important as drawing the lines. You know, we don't want to draw the lines and not give the public the opportunity to be heard in a public forum, so to speak. In recent, uh, <coughs> I just finished up the process in Bradford County for both the school board and county commission. Uh, they had a series of joint workshops where all 10 board members were discussing and there were tweets and maps that went on for maybe two meetings before there was kind of a meeting of the minds and then everyone was happy. And, um, and then after that, uh, at that last workshop where there was a, a consensus agreement and also a chance for every member of the public to come back to after they had seen an initial draft map, um, the boards went to their separate meetings. At the next meetings, it was agenda um, as a resolution, and each of them separately had a formal vote on that map that they had agreed to. That was all, that all, um, between the agreeing on the map and the passing of a, a, a resolution at a meeting, you know, happened maybe two weeks or three weeks. So um, there's a publication requirement, I believe, uh, either before or after the, the final vote, but um, it's, a, it's definitely the kind of thing could be, that could be done uh, through a series of meetings from now to February 9th. Okay. Some counties, or the commissioners are countywide. How does that affect that in any way? They, it's actually, well, so um, like LaFayette or Dixie um, are, they um, they don't have to worry about this on the, when people go to vote time because they're elected countywide, but they have the residency areas that still have to be redrawn from time to time. So certain people, like there's still a seat one, seat two, seat three, and you have to live within the boundaries of the zone. Um, and those are tweaked from time to time. Uh, the same state statute that says that they have to be equal in population applies. Um, but the voters just don't know when they go to vote because everyone's doing it countywide. Okay. okay. So, uh, the next workshop, is that what we want to look at? Yeah, it sounds like what we need to do. So we have plenty of time to get this accomplished. Uh, That's what the logger map would. Yeah, we have a workshop on the 28th, end of the month. It's already on my calendar. Yes, and we have and and <clears throat> you guys need to that. Or uh, yeah, I think we'll work on that before that time. Also, if there's um, uh, in the meantime, if there's any particular information that you think is important. Um, about this proposal, about uh, other alternatives or areas that you think should be in the same district and different district to be thinking about those obviously uh, and ready. I can be certainly prepared to live map um, with a computer, uh, either this one or, or one of them, um, and so we can all see on the screen and again, try to have kind of a meeting of the minds as quickly as we can. Good. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll, I'll also 
say, I believe um, I'll uh, uh, be presenting to the school board uh, or, or one of some combination of my colleagues are here will be if I'm out um, over the next uh, month, possibly as soon as their next workshop next week. So uh, hopefully they'll be up to speed. I know there's been some school board members in attendance at these workshops. I know we got one at the end of the day. Yeah, we got you. A schedule? Yeah. For the school board? Yeah. Um, I know we were talking about um, for the 14th uh, next Tuesday, uh, but I don't think that's been set in stone yet. Thank you. 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 We got it. Please. Oh, we got a, a letter from Mr. Romano. Um, and it's essentially that we don't have to do anything if we want to stay in with, with regard to the settlement uh, on this particular one. Um, I don't know whether Ron has told you, but we did get a <coughs> notice of the settlement of the good deal of money, did we not? Not from this one, but from another one. Yes, one hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars. Right, and so that's administered from the by the state, and I will be setting up a meeting with that agency, and also, hopefully, within the next week, we'll get the final piece of the settlement um, with the Walmart settlement. And I think Mr. Romano said that you know we've been kind of holding off as far as an expenditure plan because I don't know how much the total is. So we should get that soon. Well, I, I just remember that when this thing started, and I said, you know, um, they came to us and um, said, you know, this is a class action, and I was thinking, well, should we do it or shouldn't we do it? No, but it, you know, money's money, and if it, if it comes and if it helps people uh, get off the opioid, then y'all have done a young task. And, uh, that's, a, that's a good amount of money for helping people get off um, the drugs. So um, my, my recommendation is to do nothing and wait for the settlement. Okay. All right. Pursuant to what Mr. Romano said. <coughs> we, don't need a, we don't need to vote on anything right here tonight. So I, we don't need to vote on anything right now? No. Just that. All right. Nada. Nada. <coughs> Great Administrator Adams. 20. The board to consider a waiver of FEMA housing permitting fees through December 2023. Identified the county administrator. So we had some communication with FEMA. They're um, <coughs> asking to, well, they will be setting up probably a half a dozen FEMA trailers within the county for folks who will be are displaced from the hurricane, and they're asking for a waiver of those fees only for the folks who will be receiving the FEMA temporary housing. And so it's about $400 per unit. And again, it's around a half a dozen that I, I do need the board to approve. Motion. Second. Motion and second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Far. 21. The board will consider approval of letter requesting waiver of MAC to the economic Development Administration for the preparation of short and long term recovery plan presented by County Administrator. So, as I told the board earlier, we um, I've been working with um, the Regional Planning Council to request a preparation of short term and a long term financial recovery plan that's related to the closure of the mill. Mm -hmm. um, we had a conference call with the Florida Economic Development Representative for um, the U.S. Department of Commerce. And they, um, so actually my question is twofold. Would the board support the, um, a grant application that the Regional Planning Council would make on our behalf? And will you also agree to the request of the, of the match for the board of commissioners? There's a, um, a, typically a 10% match and they have agreed to consider waiving that on our behalf under the circumstances. Planning Council. Now, since I'm a member of the Planning Council, I can't vote, or I have to let it be known that I'm. I don't, I don't think it's a conflict. Yeah, and nearer to your financial. Not mine. Doesn't help you financially at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're good to vote. Okay. We need a motion to approve the waiver. 
Consider the affirmation of the county administrative selection for the building official position plan vacancies. So after almost 26 years of service, our current building official, Danny Grimer, has made the decision to retire mid-December. So we advertised for applications for this position. <coughs> we received several applications, and after interviews were held, um, Mr. Earl Kettering was the highest scoring applicant. Mr. Ketring has 27 years of experience in the construction industry and has also served on the planning board for 15 years. He has been approved to take the test for his provisional license, which is one of the requirements, requirements for standard certification for building official. Um, due to Mr. Ketring's vast experience in construction and planning, I feel he meets the qualifications to satisfactorily perform the duties as the county building official, and I respectfully request affirmation from the board. Motion. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. County Administrator to discuss informational items. So as a reminder, November 10th at noon is our Veterans Day luncheon. It will be held at Forest Capital Hall. Um, if you have not made arrangements to serve or whatever role you'd like to play, please reach out as soon as possible. Also, um, Teresa, will you display the, uh, the image? If you'll recall at a previous meeting, Mr. J.T. Davis came to the board and asked for permission to paint a mural at Hampton Springs Park. And the board approved that, but asked to see a design. So this last weekend, um, he had students from, and the art teacher go out and they basically just painted an outline of the mural they wished to paint, just because it was part of the um, the wish from the boards to to see what they actually wanted to paint. So I just wanted to for y'all to see the what their vision is. And he said that they would have maybe some characters and costume. Um, he wanted that to be a mystery. <laughs> but I just wanted you to see the design that they wish to paint and make sure that it meets your. It's it's not agenda, but just to make sure that we have consensus that this is this is. Satisfactory. <clears throat> Any questions from the board on this? Like that? All right. Last item, um, November 21st is our next scheduled meeting, which um, I realized last week is Thanksgiving week. So my question is, do you, do you wish to hold that meeting on the 21st, or do you want to consider moving it to the 28th, which would be after Thanksgiving. Uh, the week after would be, after be better, better for me. Yeah. What you got? But we have a workshop on that day. <coughs> Do you know if we have any bid openings or public hearings for the 21st? I couldn't think of any. I don't think we have any. I don't think so. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. You need a motion to combine a meeting? Well, it's not agenda. Can we just, can we? Um, just have the right. census from the board to move the meeting. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a workshop and also right. this meeting. Have your workshop on first and then your regular meeting. It's whichever makes the most work for the best meeting. Yeah. Well, yes, I would be to forward. Vote for the meeting. Well, I meeting. We probably should do the meeting first. Well, I'll just circle back around with you and and we'll look at um, what the agenda looks like and because that will be the workshop for redistricting. Yes. So we need to take that into consideration. Okay, so we can just move the meeting to the 28th. Okay. But then you would follow with another meeting the Monday thereafter for the first one in December. Yes. We actually have two meetings in December, so it would be whatever. Do. So it looks like that Monday would be the fourth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which would be less than a week apart. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. so 
you'd see. <laughs> oh, well, I had to get my math glasses out. I'm, 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 I can see district lines over there. I'm kidding. I don't see those. Now, um, that meeting is also the reorganization meeting. The 28th. Right. Yeah. Or what would now be the 28th. Yes, that would be a reorganization. Around time. Yeah, I hadn't. I don't know what's in the policy in the board's policy for that. I have to look at that. You submitted on the I the think first or the second meeting in November, didn't you? Is it tied to the election? Does it stipulate a date? I think it's our. That's the board's decision to, uh, to, uh, to reorganize, I guess. And we need to take this into consideration for the next calendar and not try to schedule a meeting during Thanksgiving week because we went through this last year. I and I think the only time it's an issue is after a general election. Oh, yeah. Remember, which we don't have this don't year. Have yeah. Right. So I, is that correct, Conrad? So it wouldn't be an issue this year? Well, we're going to say it's not an issue. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we will say we're doing the reorg meeting on the 28th, and unless you find otherwise, we need to do something different. Okay. So you want the meeting and then the workshops for reorganization? Either way. Yeah. All right. You need to determine which is going to go first. Right. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. If you'll just come up, state your name and address. Thank you. Well, I was hoping somebody else would take it, but. Uh, <laughs> Group of people for the most part of my neighbors. Yeah. Um, I've been there longer than most of them. What's your uh, my name is Joe L. Milan Jr. Okay. And address. Uh, my address is 3646 Azalea Drive. Yeah. And I built my house in 1989. Uh, this is a a map of, of uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Drive. It starts at Shiloh Cemetery Road. It runs all the way to my property line and as far north as you can go. Uh, it was laid out along with Isaiah Road by C.A. Lewis. He wanted to uh, dis distri distribute his property to Doris's sisters and he he uh, gave them, he laid out, gave them, pick of what they wanted, and he deeded the whole road, as they drive, all the way to my property line. Uh, it's never been a private road, and uh, we have commercial traffic all the time. We have uh, uh, the delivery services. Walmart delivery, uh, the uh, uh, mosquito patrol comes all the way down to the end, all the way to my property line. Um, I have had problems in the past because when you get to my property line, Google says you can come through my property and through this ferry in this property and cross the creek where there's no bridge and get to Highway 221. <laughs> but I've never told anyone that that's a private road. And as far as I know, nobody else has ever told a private road. They gave the whole road to the county. <clears throat> when we had this hurricane, the people from uh, the Baptist uh, Disaster came out there and to help us. Clean up. <clears throat> they said they were instructed by the county just to take the debris to the road, and that's where it is now. And um, it would be picked up there. So that's what happened. 
And uh, I don't know why I didn't get paid. Nobody asked me when, when they paid, but I guess if we did the county figures, it wasn't necessary for seven people who lived down the Darden Road to have paid. I don't think anybody's complaining. We still pay our taxes. You know? uh, we're in a, in a rock and hard place because uh, you say it's a private road and you won't service it. Uh, all you got to do is look at the maps. Now this is an old one. And it shows on the old ones that it's, a, that it's your road. It was given to you when it was laid out. That's the utility. <coughs> uh, if you tell FEMA that, the truth, then there shouldn't be any problem with them picking that up on a public road. Is that what the concern is? It's the debris pickup? Yes, sir. debris pickup. And we're caught as rock in a hard place because even if we could take it to the row off sites, you won't accept it there. Because they say, just take it to the to, to your road and it'll be picked up there. You know? And so that's what we did. What we were told to do by the roll off site people, by the the uh, people who came to help us, the Baptist Disaster Relief, they were told by the county, take it to the road. It'll be picked up there. And that's what was done. Uh, is, is this road a private or is it a county? So, is that, so no part of Azalea Road or Azalea Drive is on the private road list? I reached, I only found out about this just shortly before the meeting as far as the details. So I reached out to FDOT and asked them if they could help clarify what happened with that particular road. And the monitoring company for FDOT is stating that at where the pavement ends is where county maintenance ends. So therefore, they did not allow pickup past that. But what I cannot determine, or couldn't determine today, is that small section that is not paved, who, where the ownership lies, because when I check the property appraiser's map, it has no label on it. So I think I just need to do some research so I can report back to FDOT, you know, this is, this is either owned by the county or it's considered a private road, but no portion of that is on the, is on the list mm -hmm. as far as the non-county maintained roads that we it's submitted. Not, you don't maintain a dirt road, right. uh, uh, but it was, it was deeded. My, my, uh, my plant, this is, this is uh, uh, I couldn't find my original plant. This one was uh, one that was my uh, father-in-law's, Bill Brown, he lives on the, lived on the same road at the time. <clears throat> but he, he shows no break from Shallow Cemetery all the way down to my property line. There's no break in the road. There's no, uh, it, it was all laid out at one time. The utilities were all put in at one time, you know. Uh, and it was, matter of fact, <clears throat> Uh, it was all the houses were built on it within five years. You know, everybody built the same time because he was building for his <clears throat> sister in laws, the doors and sisters, and he was building for Henry, one for Henry right next door to me. And he was and he was building for two of his preachers. He was building one, he, he sold one to Jerry Green, but she decided she liked one uptown. So Jerry said, hey, I got a contract with CA. Would you like to buy this from me if he'll, if he'll uh, sell the contract to you? I said, great, Jerry, I love it. And I bought it and finished paying off the CA and built my house in 1989. I've been there ever since. It's always been a public road. It didn't get paid, but it, you're not going to pay the street for seven people, I don't guess. You didn't want to. That sounds like we just need to do a little research. Um, I think you just need to, to make it right, because that's what's right. It's not a public road. Right. Now, if you come down, right. road, yeah, if you come down to the end of it, 
not a private road. Yeah. To the end of it. Green. Yeah. 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 The creek <clears throat> on a non existent bridge and get to 221. I've had to turn people around in our property line, but we have deliveries all the time. It's not a public, it's not a private road, it never has been. Yeah, well, I think we got, we've got some other private, we on some other, you know, issues with the private roads and trying to get them to pick up. I don't think they have a problem with FEMA once they, you know, it's not FEMA's determination, it's DOT's determination. Mm -hmm. And the determination was made that they would only <coughs> remove debris from county maintained roads. And that's what we are trying to resolve with them. We're not the only county in this predicament. Mm -hmm. We sent a letter two weeks ago to the mm -hmm. DOT secretary. We're trying to work through it with our legislators. So it's not, they, they're, they are stating they only wish to remove debris on county maintained roads. So we are trying to resolve this with DOT and with the legislature to get funding so they can complete the project. Well, there are plenty of roads in the county that are still dirt. Correct. Yeah, that's what she's saying. That's, yeah. our, that's our only fault right there. This is dirt. Well, I think that I think what is maybe the question is, according to our county maintained road list, the portion that we maintain into the pavement. <clears throat> that's why there's the question. And so I just have to be able to to show them. That is under county ownership, and I I don't think there will be an issue, but I need a little bit of time to resolve it. And we have a green sign. Yes, I understand. Private, I, well, it's only because it's a portion of it is what they're saying. There is a green sign, mm -hmm. but there's a portion of that road that is not county maintained. Is it's what they're dirt. saying because it's dirt. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to clarify. We still have machine no, 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 no. I understand. I understand. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We, just, we just mainly wanted, because we had heard so many different things, we just needed clarification. I talked to Pam for a long time this morning, and that's what we just needed clarification, because they, they were hit and miss. They came down and started taking some and then just disappeared. Well, that's because the monitoring, well, yeah. the monitoring company stopped them. That's what I oh, that this portion is not county maintained, so you cannot remove debris. And I found out about it this afternoon, and I will I will try to resolve it. As long as somebody's doing something. <laughs> I thought that, that was our main thing. Can I ask a question? Why is the sign green if it's not my county main Because I own some property right on down the street, and it's a blue sign there. Right. Going into the property, so that tells me it's a private property, and I know it's a private property because I own it. I doubt that okay. there would be two signs on one road, so I, I don't. It should be blue, though. If it's not, if it's not. Well, my what I'm trying to say is the majority of the road is county is maintained, and that's probably why the sign is green. I don't know <laughs> that we would put a blue sign on the other end on a portion of the road that isn't county maintained. But that they're not necessarily going by the green or blue signs, they're going by the parameters that are on our county maintained road list. If I would see the stuff that's over there, it's piled so high because I think that's where the worst tornado struck down was right there in that exactly. area. There. They sent me it's pictures today. Yeah. Yes. I saw pictures. It's piled so high you can't even see the neighbor's house and the neighbor, she lost her house. Two trees fell through her house. Right. She's going to tear it down and rebuild. It's terrible over there. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Come on. Bill Bryan, 1005 East Marguerite. The last bit is spelled. One zero zero five East Marguerite. Oh, uh, 
Item 22 is what I'm reading. No. Um, yeah, item 22. Uh, I understand Danny's retiring. In December, did you say? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the present building inspector is not qualified to fill that position. I don't believe so, and he did not apply for it. Uh -oh. uh, has Earl got the qualifications that Danny has to fill that building official position? He has the qualifications that are required to fill that position. He does. So I can come up wherever I need to go, and I can get a copy of those licenses that Danny's got. You're telling me Earl's got those licenses. I don't believe he has. He has two years to obtain the provisional license, according to what we understand. Okay. So he's been approved to take the test for yeah. his provisional license, and we still have an inspector. Well, I'm not concerned about the inspector. I'm concerned about building official. When you have to have somebody to approve plans, and, you know, the next step up, uh, we just need to be careful. Or we will be in a real big mess. Are you are you concerned as far as the city contracting with the county? I'm concerned of the city and the county. Okay. Not having a qualified building official. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, if they allow it, but who's going to sign those things? Plans. It would be the current building official. Until for two years? No, sir. It would be the, it would be who we hire to be the building official. So he's going to be able to sign. I'm talking about Earl. Man. That's Earl can sign yeah. those plans for two years. That's my understanding. He has two years to obtain his provisional license. So the city could certainly hire your own. I understand, your own I understand that. I okay. understand that. But we got a contract, and we need to be. Uh, and my concern is, of course. That next step up, I don't understand how, I know, understand how, you know, you got time to do it, but I don't understand how a non qualified person can That's my understanding those of those plans. That's my understanding of the way the statute reads. You had to check. Yes, because we, we can be in big trouble. Well, again, um, now, if the city wishes to hire your own building... No, I have okay. absolutely no concern about that. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about the county being able to have a non-qualified person that can sign plans, sign, you know, sign off on plans and all that. Yeah, it's been 28 years since Danny was hired. If I remember, the last party in the conference. Hey, can you be quiet? <laughs> If I recall correctly, now I'm saying this, this is not the gospel. You understand that now. I think we did the same thing with Danny when he was hired. It was provisional right. until such time as he was. That, that was at that time. Well, I don't know what it is now. wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm going to ask with the board's permission to check and see if that's the case today with regard to the statute. Let's take the statute and make sure we're okay so we can satisfy Mr. Bryan's and see if we're right. Simple. Okay. Simple. And if we're not right, then we need to decide what we're doing there. Okay? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right. No recognition on that. No. I've talked to what we call about half about the pre removal on private roads and non county maintained roads and and we decided to head because uh somebody moves some trash and the other day. Don't stop there. She got it under control. All right. Commissioner? No, sir. 
I've been asked by a lot of people about the private roads too, and I've told them exactly what I was told to tell them. Put it out there on that road, and sooner or later, some kind of way, it'll be picked up. And who's going to pay for it in the end? Who knows? Now, it's just a toss up. But <clears throat> I think we'll get the support for this is over with, and get it all to each other and pay for it. I feel that's pretty good. I've had some of the same, I think we all had the same issue of you know, asking some of the citizens to, we're telling them to put it in the right of way. I think some of the monitors and work crews come by and tell them to leave it on their side of the right of way out of the ditch. And I believe it's probably more because their arm not able to reach into the ditch and they're telling them they're going to come around and get it. But then they come back and tell the citizens that uh, it's not right not coming on private property. So I in turn tell them to push it in the ditch. So uh, that, that's where we're going to put it anyway. So on on, on DOT property, on the right away. I told them some, probably some of the same people push it out there in that ditch. Let DOT work with it. 